What's up, everyone? Beat the Installer here with my lovely assistant, Jen, of course, my wife. And we have the LG C2 83-inch TV to unbox and set up and show you, you know, how good it is compared to last year's version and also compare it to the all-wonderful A90J Master Series OLED from Sony. See if you should buy this product or still stick for the Sony. So we're going to go over all that, unboxing, set it up. It's got a cool new stand this year, so I'm super excited to get this out of the box. Make sure to smash the like button when you can. I really appreciate that. Subscribe and set the notification bell to all. And make sure to check out my new channel, Be The Consumer, where we're talking about things like Tesla, monitors, phones, all that kind of good stuff. We just uploaded the new Tesla Model Y performance video, new buyer experience and all that. So check that video out right here. And uh, subscribe to that channel as well because we're gonna go over a lot of new consumer products that are a little bit smaller than these giant TVs. And let me know in the comments if you're in the market for a large TV. I wanna know which one you're looking at, the C2, the G2, the A90J, or maybe a QLED. Let me know which one and why in the comments below. And let's get into the unboxing. Jen, would you do the honors and pop the top so we can get this thing going? All right. Cool. All right, so in the top, all we really have is the piece of plastic that goes in the back of the TV stand, and then, you know, the whole package of remote and screws and all the good stuff here. So we will show you this in just a minute, but let's figure out how we're going to move all this box, get the box out of the way. Okay, let's take these clips off on the side here, and this should open right up. Cool. That was easy. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Hey, I've done this a few more times than Jen, so just squeeze and pull, muscles. Squeeze and pull. <laughs> I'll do the dancing over here this time. Ish, 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 ish. All right. Uh, just so you know, I still have the cast on. It's almost off. It comes off tomorrow, but we wanted to get this video out to you guys as soon as possible, so, you know. I'll have the cast on, got a little boot, no problem. All right, let's open this up. Let's pull these apart. Pretty easy. Uh, why don't we just take them out that way? Are we going that way with them? All right, here, why don't we just grab them together and we'll just take them both out. Do you want to do that or? Never mind. Wife knows best. Yeah. You know, that was probably a risky move to go over the top of a $6,000 TV, but hey, you know, it's how we do it. Uh, let me lift this for you, and uh, we probably should have pulled those out before, but there you go. Thank you, thank you. And I'll lift that other side, too. Don't want to ruin the, uh, the cool rug. All right, let's take off the pieces here. Ooh, it's so thin. So there's some crucial styrofoam here, one on the front of the screen, which gives a lot of protection, so, you know, no issues with the OLED. And then on the back here, it has another large piece that also houses the stand, part of the stand anyways, the front part. So we'll get this out and take this big piece off. Ooh, there's the TV. Thank you. And then we have the other piece of the stand, which is, wow, that's noticeably lighter than last year. Uh, I think the TV's supposed to be lighter as well. So let's go ahead and pull these out so that I can put the styrofoam back on and we can lay the TV down. All right, so I took out the stand and the back piece here and put the rest of the styrofoam back on because you have two options to get the stand on. Either you take all of it off and you find a table to put it on, which, you know, it's a large TV. You could put it on the ground, but then it's really hard to get the stand on. I think it's easiest to put the piece that's on the back, the styrofoam here, to put that on the ground, which elevates the TV like nine inches, and then lay the styrofoam down on top of that. So you lift the TV off the ground, and then it just gives you a, a much easier access to the bottom of the TV to put that stand on, and then you pop it right back up. So that's what we're gonna do here, is set this on the ground, and then lay the TV down on top of this. So let's go ahead and lay that down. It'll kick that bottom right up. Go ahead, you can just bring her on down. All right, that's good. There you go, beautiful, I like it. So now we'll take the, the bottom of the box off where we have access to the stand. Put it over here. So there are three screws to put into the bottom of the main part of the stand that holds on the front 
face, and then once you have those on, four go into the bottom of the TV. So I'll put these on real quick. All right. Now the last time we did this with the C1, when you put the stand on, it kind of you know moved it a little. This one's more balanced. We have that styrofoam under there pretty evenly, so we'll just pop these suckers on real quick. Grab that plastic piece, we'll throw it on right there. So it's got little grooves that go into it this way, put it up like that, and then pop it in. Little force required, okay? So now we're good and we can stand the TV back up and then we'll put it up on the entertainment center and show you guys how cool it looks and compare it to the A90J. Let's go ahead and tip it back up. There you go, that's pretty straightforward. So I think this is a little bit easier than actually putting it on a table and risking like damaging it on the edge of a hard table. So let's get this stuff off and we'll pull the plastic off the top as well. Can you help me slide this forward a little bit so we have room behind it? There we go. That should be good. Let's get the entertainment centers here, and then we'll put it up there. Look awesome. You ready? One, two, three. All right. Woo-wee. Let's go ahead and pull this stuff off here. I'm going to go up over the top. Ooh, that is nice looking. So now all we have left is pulling the plastic off turning the TV on and seeing how awesome this TV is, especially for gaming. Definitely gonna do a little gaming footage compared to the A90J. Would you do the honors, Jen? All right. It's a noisy one. All right, well, Jen's definitely getting better at the, uh, the plastic pull, far better than me with the Vanna White style. Um, I appreciate it. I think that's it. So uh, we're all done, and I appreciate your help. Um, and now we'll just have this TV sitting here for a couple weeks, if that's cool. No big deal? No. All right. <laughs> well, we'll try to get out of here as soon as possible. Thanks so much. Love you. Thanks. Boom. So the 83-inch C2 literally looks identical to the C1, but... It weighs 20 pounds less, so it's obviously made of a little bit lighter material. There is this plastic film on the back. You can take that off. People have asked me before. That's just there so it doesn't get scratched in manufacturing. It has a 400 by 400 millimeter visa pattern, which is nice to have it a little wider for the big TV so it's not so wobbly. And then there's a little plate in the middle of the TV that comes off, and there's actually two posts similar to the G2 or G1 mount. And then there's the HDMI ports on the right, but as you can see, the TV stand for the 83 inch doesn't turn. I was hoping it would, but it makes sense that this TV is so large, they probably don't want you turning this big TV all over the place. Maybe it just wasn't stable enough. There is a little channel that you can run the HDMIs through to get them into the middle of the back. And the power cord comes from that same area. So it used to come from the far left, now it's in the center, that's a good move. So the C2, like its predecessors, have four HDMI 2.1. It has two on the right side for the 83-inch model along with the USB in. And then on the bottom, it has two more HDMI 2.1s again with two more USB. The HDMI 2 on the upper right is the eARC port where you connect your soundbar speakers. And then it does have an antenna in. I think it is just the, the first version, the ATSC 1.0. I don't think it is the 3.0 next gen, but I'm not 100%. And then it has a digital optical output along with infrared blaster so you can get your signal into a cabinet if needed, but most likely you're gonna be fine with the infrared on the front. So pretty straightforward. So here is the actual remote. It is the Magic Remote by LG. It's the same remote as last year. It looks identical. Definitely better than the year before. It does have like a flatter edge here where you can just set it on a table and it doesn't wobble as much. So better than the previous remote, the, the, the center button here is very clicky. It's got the same Netflix and Disney Plus, LG channels. Uh, the voice assistant's on the bottom. It has numbers on it still. I don't really know why. I don't do much with the numbers, but at least on this remote, you can assign those to different apps. So that's halfway decent. Uh, let's go ahead and fire this big boy up.
So the TV pops on to Antenna TV, but there is nothing available, at least I haven't searched for channels. Hit the home button, brings you to the OS, the WebOS 6.0, I believe. New processor, I think it's the same OS. Um, go into more detail about that on the review, but basically you have your LG channel and then a variety of apps, pretty much everything you can think of. You can log into your accounts here and get specific info to you, and then there's you know, sports updates and such. Then you have your, your dashboard, which you can connect to other devices and also your inputs uh, and some audio devices. And then frequently viewed channels. Um, it will, I guess it says it's gonna look at what you watch and then you know, auto-populate some channels you might watch. Then here's the LG channels, uh, sports scores, uh, shopping, which you can get rid of. I think this section, if you want, if you uh, don't want advertisements, I think it gets rid of some of that. And then web browsers, it just goes on from here, all kinds of different stuff. So pretty decent OS. I don't really use any of the OSs because I use an Apple TV. So if you don't like this OS, you always can just uh, pick a different device, whether it be a Nvidia Shield, Apple TV, Amazon Stick, et cetera. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. So we're going to fire up the Apple TV and then go to a comparison, but we'll check out some of this stuff. Uh, lastly, you do want to make sure that when you get into this, you go into the settings and turn off like this auto picture mode so you, you don't have it uh, handicapped because this is a pretty bright TV. It looks pretty good. I'm, I'm stoked. I think that's probably even blowing out the picture a little bit, but I will turn this on to cinema or X. Yeah, here we go. Turn it on to uh, expert, right? Good to go, and then you know here's the menu on the side. I'm not gonna go through all this again. I'll go through some of this stuff in the review, but I just wanted to get this fired up and pop it on and see how good it looks, and then compare it to the other TV. So my initial thoughts after watching a little bit of content is that the LG C2 does look a bit brighter to me without anything up against it. Whether I was watching news or sports or SDR and, and definitely in HDR movies, it looked remarkable. But of course, gaming is where the LG C2 would really shine, so let's check some gaming out. One of the coolest thing about the LG products, specifically the OLEDs, and this C2 is no different, is how cool gaming is. As I said, it's got four HDMI 2.1s, 4K at 120, like VRR, it actually works. Everything's quite nice. Uh, it's got the game optimizer, which is pretty cool. You know, it tells you what's got going on right here. I don't have VRR activated. I got, uh, you know, ALLM on, and then you can go into the menus further, hit the game optimizer menu. You can see all the different options around here. You can actually turn the game optimizer off. It's got different genre modes. You can reduce the blue light if you're, you know, trying to get to bed at some point and it's got some you know, even higher input lag. You can reduce the input lag further as well. So a lot of cool stuff, but let's move on and compare it versus the A90J for movies and other content and just in general processing and all that. So comparing the A90J and the C2. The C2 is on the left, the A90J is on the right, and I messed around with a lot of the settings to make them as close as I could. We noticed that the C2 doesn't look quite right with regards to its uh, calibration. The A90J on the right is calibrated, and when messing around with the color balance on the C2, warm 30 was as close as I could get it to look like the A90J. If we went to warm 50, which I'd like to, it was way too warm. If we went anything less, it looked too bluish. So warm 30 is as close as I can get. We do need to calibrate the C2 on the left, but it definitely looks pretty good. It looks slightly brighter than the A90J and SDR. I have it in the ISF bright mode versus the cinema on the Sony. Uh, actually, the Sony is in custom mode. I remember last year the C1 was slightly brighter in SDR too, but this year it looks significantly brighter. I think watching your typical cable, sports, movies from something like this where it's YouTube TV, you'd be quite happy having the LG C2. It looks pretty awesome. When watching HDR movies, it looks very competitive with the A90J. I think the A90J looks a touch brighter. We have these maxed out again, but the color again on the LG C2 just looks a bit off. I mean, it's either a little bit too cool or a little too warm. Um, again, you can change that with calibration, get your TV calibrated, or again, yours might not be off color wise, but typically Sony's come a little more color accurate than the LG OLEDs. Either way, I'd be quite happy having this LG C2. It looks significantly brighter than last year. And the fact that it's right on par with the Master Series OLED here is awesome. And we haven't even gotten to gaming yet. Again, let's check that out. Gaming wise, 
I don't know. I think both these TVs are quite enjoyable to play games on. Obviously, the LG C2 has lower input lag in game mode. It's got VRR and all that working. You don't have to mess around with it. There's four HDMI 2.1s. So the Sony only has two, and some of the gaming features typically aren't as smooth. And you also have the game optimizer on the LG, which is way cool. And there isn't such a thing on the Sony TVs yet. Maybe they'll have one eventually. But I think it's pretty straightforward to say that the LG TVs are, are better for gaming and speed gaming. but you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that everyone will enjoy playing on the LG more just because traditionally the Sony processing is just a little bit better. Although this year I'm not certain, you know, I'll have a full review on this. Again, I'll be going over all that motion and everything else. But, you know, I think it looks to be a great TV. This LG C2 looks amazing. 83 inch solid TV on a stand here. I think anyone would be quite happy to have this TV. So pretty awesome. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to smash the like button, subscribe and all that. Make sure to go over and check out Be The Consumer where I have that Tesla video up. I'd be more than happy to have you guys over there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.